Hi, this is Amy Romeo from the jewelry and craft making blog, amyromeo.com. And on this channel, I share fun and easy jewelry making and craft projects. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to use the Cricut foil transfer system to make foiled faux leather earrings. It's really easy and fun, and I can't wait to show you all about it. I've also designed two really pretty patterns for you to try out. They're free on my blog, and I will share with you exactly how to go and download those so you can try making foiled faux leather earrings yourself. So if you're ready to jump into the tutorial, please hit that subscribe button and hit the bell for notifications so you'll know when I post more videos just like this one. And let's get started. Let's go over the tools and materials we'll use to make these foiled earrings. The first thing you'll need is a Cricut machine. The foil transfer kit works with either the Cricut Maker or any of the Cricut Explore machines. You'll also need the foil transfer kit, which comes with the special tip housing, three different thickness tips, which I'll show you here. This is the housing, and then there's three tips that will foil different um, thicknesses of lines, and this just fits right into here and loads into your machine. I'll show you how to do that when we get to that part. And the foil transfer kit also includes some pieces of foil for you to try out and some of the special tape strips. So I'll show you how to use that. You'll also need a purple strong grip cutting mat. The faux leather I'm gonna use for the earrings is a smooth textured faux leather. And I would avoid using the pebbled or heavily textured faux leathers, let me show you the difference here, because it's just not going to take the foil design as well. So here's the pebbled, which you don't want to use, and here's smooth. You'll also need some blue painter's tape, and we'll use that to tape the faux leather down to the mat like I do cutting any faux leather earrings. You'll need some craft scissors, and then for the earrings themselves, you'll need a um, 1 16th inch hole punch to punch the earring hole, and I'll link to this tool in the description box below. You'll need some flat nose jewelry pliers to open and close your jump rings, and some earring hooks, and some jump rings. You'll also need my earring template cut file, which I will link to in the description box below. You can grab that from my website, amyromeo.com, in my resource library, and then you can craft along with me as I make this project. Now let me show you how to get that file from my website and upload it to Cricut Design Space. So first I wanna show you how to get the SVG cut file that I'll be using to make these earrings, and you'll get it from my website, amyromeo.com, and right here on the resource library tab, if you already have the password, you can go ahead and enter it and click on the file and download it to your computer or you can click get a password and you'll fill out a form and get the password and come back to this page to enter the library. So once you've downloaded and unzipped the folder from my resource library, then we will head over to Cricut Design Space. And it's important to note that the foil transfer tool at this time only works with Cricut Design Space on a desktop. It doesn't work on an iPad or an iPhone or mobile at least not at this time. So I'll click on new project, upload, and then upload image, and I will browse to find where I downloaded the file. The SVG file is here, unzipped, and I'll see a preview of the two designs that I've made for you, and I will click save, and then click on the designs in the uploaded images row, and then insert images and that will bring them into your canvas. I will drag them up here to the top left so I can see them a little easier, and I'm not going to do these now, so I'm gonna go ahead and hide those just by clicking on the eye icon next to those earring shapes. And I think I'm actually going to delete the layers that I'm not going to use instead of hiding them. So here in the layers panel, I'll just click on each one and click delete so they're out of the way. And the first thing we need to do is choose the thickness of the foiling tip we'll use for these top foil layers. And the way to do that is in the layers panel, click on the first one, the foiling layer, and you're gonna change the linotype from cut 
to foil and I'm going to select the fine foil setting and I'll show you why I'm selecting this in the next section. I did a sample piece where I used the same design and then tested all three thicknesses and I liked fine best but I'll show you that so you get a sense of what I'm talking about. So I'll select fine for that one and you'll see it changes the color uh, to gold. I can go ahead and click silver because that's what I'll be using. Um, and then I need to repeat that for this other earring, foil, fine, and then click on the color and change the color to silver. And you'll see here now our layers panel has changed and those layers are now marked that they're going to be foiled and they're going to be foiled with the fine tip. So the most important step is to select all of the layers. So I did that by clicking my mouse, dragging a box to select all of them. They're all selected. You can see here in gray, they're all selected. And I need to click the paper clip, clip it to attach them. That's a very important step. They have to be attached for the foil transfer kit to work with the Cricut in the way that we want it to. So now that I've attached all four of the layers and you can see them attached here, I'll click make it. You'll notice that both of the layers of our earrings, the foil layer and the faux leather layer are placed on one mat. And that's how Cricut Design Space uses the foil transfer kit technology. So what I want to do is move these earring shapes away from the edge of my mat. And I will show you why in a minute. But for now, we're just going to drag them over to just past the two inch line and click continue. And then I need to choose the base material, which means the faux leather material that I'm going to be foiling onto. If you're using an Explore Air 2, which I've also tested, you'll need to turn your dial to custom. Even though we're selecting the base material and you may have the base material setting on your dial, you have to select custom for the foiling process to work. So. I always use the faux leather paper thin setting, but as you can see, it's grayed out. Design Space knows that I'm going to be foiling and at this time it doesn't support choosing faux leather as your base material. So I'm going to select something similar in thickness and we'll use that. I'll click on browse all materials and I've selected compatible and compatible shows you all of the materials that are compatible as a base material for the foil transfer kit. And I've used craft board with some success. So I will select that again and click done. If you're using the Explore Air 2, you'll also select craft board. I'm going to leave the pressure at default because the first step is foiling. And I've found that leaving the pressure at default when foiling on faux leather seems to work well. But again, you can adjust that setting as you experiment if necessary. And the second part of the screen here tells us that we are going to load the foil transfer tool with the fine tip attachment. And that's the one that has one line on it. I'll show you that in the next step. So let's go ahead and prepare the mat and load the transfer tool and start foiling the faux leather before we cut it. So before we prepare the faux leather mat to be foiled, I wanted to show you my sample of this design uh, foiled with the three different tips. So this is the design that I foiled using the fine tip. This is the medium tip and this is the bold tip. And I'm not sure if you can tell, but the thicker the tip gets, the more sort of smudging of the foiling happens between the lines because this is a delicate line pattern. So this fine tip produced a really nice clean uh, design. So that's the one that I'm going to use for this project. So we'll be using the purple strong grip cutting mat like we always do to cut faux leather. But I did want to show you this um, mat placement is a little different because I normally put faux leather shiny side down or pretty side down. But in this process, we need to foil the pretty side. So I'm putting it with the back down and I always cut my faux leather um, just slightly larger than the shapes that need to cut. But with foiling, I like to give myself extra room and you'll see why, because we need to tape the foil down to the material. So you'll want excess material, excess faux leather so that you have space to tape down the foil. You don't want the foil to overlap and get onto your mat because the foil will stick to your mat. 
So I'm placing the cutout piece of faux leather with the backing down on my mat and I have lots of room because I know my shapes are gonna cut and foil right about here. And you'll also want to make sure that your star wheels, which are the little rollers on your Cricut, are moved off to the side. You don't want those rolling over the taped edges or over your material. So now that I have this down, I've cut a piece of foil a little bit larger than the designs that are gonna foil, and I'm gonna place this shiny side up. This dull surface is what is going to foil onto the material. So I'm gonna place it right here. And, oh, before I do that, I need to tape down my faux leather. So let me use my blue painter's tape. And this is what I do every time I cut faux leather. So this process is the same. Just tape around on all the edges. Okay, now we're ready for the foil. So the foil, shiny side up, and you'll use these little tape strips that come with the foil transfer kit. They are reusable, so as you can see, I've used them for other projects and I've just put them right back on this mat. And you want the tape, the foil tape, to catch as much of the faux leather material as possible because it sticks better to the faux leather than it does to the blue painter's tape. And you want to avoid wrinkles. If you can, any wrinkles or big movements in the foil, you want to try and keep it as flat as possible. So we'll tape up all four sides. And it's important that the tape does not cover where you need to foil. If you're using the foil tip and it tries to foil over where the tape is, it's not going to apply the design. So you wanna make sure that your design will fit inside of your painter's tape area and your foil area. So the next thing we need to do is insert our tip and here is the housing. And all these little tips have a little line at the bottom that show you the different thicknesses. So one line is the foil tip, I'm sorry, the fine tip, the medium tip, and then three lines for the bold tip. So I'm gonna select the fine one, and you just press the top of the housing, and then put the tip in. The, the uh, line will be visible from the bottom, and then depress the little pusher here, and it'll pop up. And I will load it into the machine. Again, make sure those star wheels are out of the way. Press this down well. We'll press the double arrow button to load. And then the C button to begin the foiling. So when the foiling is complete, it's important that you do not unload the mat. What you wanna do is carefully remove your tape strips and your piece of foil. Again, you can reuse these tape strips, so I'm gonna set this aside and later peel off the tape strips. I wanted to show you the back of the foil. So this is where all the foil has been pushed off of the sheet and onto the faux leather. So you can see that as it's foiling, it's really denting up and um, creasing up the foil, but that's okay. As long as it's taped securely and it doesn't move, it will transfer nicely. So now, Design Space is prompting us to remove the foil tip and to reinsert the fine tip blade, which is what I use to cut faux leather. And we'll put that back in. And then we'll press the C button to continue the cut. I always like to use a sharp tool to sort of get my tool in there and make sure that the cut was complete. And in this case it is. So I will unload the mat. And let me try and show you up close how pretty that foil came out. Isn't that beautiful? 
So I will just get under here and remove the shapes. And then I'll show you show you how I punch the holes and attach the earring hooks but here they are foiled. Isn't that gorgeous? So I'm going to show you how to put earring holes in your faux leather shapes. I did want to point out that I didn't put anything on the back of these earrings just because I didn't want to make the video any longer but when I make these again I will put some Cricut foil iron-on onto the back. That will help keep the earrings from curling and it'll also make the back look prettier and just have a more professional finish. So I have a whole video on four different ways to put a back on faux leather earrings and I'll link to that for you in the, the description box. So to make the earring holes, the Cricut can cut the holes but I prefer to make them manually with a hole punch and the hole punch I use is a 1 16th inch hole punch from Amazon. I'll link to that in the box for you because I use this every day and I really love it. And it works just like a regular hole punch. So I'm going to line up the, the punch where I want my earring hook and my jump ring to be and just punch. Makes a nice clean hole. And then I like to use this earring and match it up to the next earring so that my holes will be in the same location on both. It's a little hard to see because this is a black earring but I'm just lining it up and I'll punch again and now we have our earring holes so in order to attach the earring hooks I'll be using a shepherd's hook and a six millimeter jump ring you could also use a five millimeter jump ring which will be a little bit smaller if we want the earrings to hang straight I'm going to turn the bottom loop of the earring hook and change the direction so that our earrings will hang straight and I'll show you how I do that quickly. Using flat nose pliers I grip the bottom loop of the earring and then with my thumb and forefinger I hold the earring hook and I just do a little twist. It's a 90 degree twist and now the earring loop is in this direction and I'll do that to the other earring hook. So they're both facing the same way. Now I'll take my jump ring and I need to open it up. There's an opening in the jump ring which I like to put facing up and then I grab one side of the jump ring with flat nose pliers and I like to use a second pair of flat nose pliers to grip the other side and with one wrist I'm just going to twist open so that the jump ring opens up and I will sl slide on my earring shape and also my earring hook. You want to make sure that the hook is going in the right direction and then just close it back up. And I'll repeat that for the other earring. What I wanted to show you though was the other pattern that I'm including for you to try this technique on my blog at amyromeo.com and again check the description box for the link to grab my cut files for both of these projects. But this is the other earring design that I give you and I cut this one using the medium tip. So the black earrings I cut with the fine tip and this design I cut with the medium tip. I did try it first with the bold tip and I didn't like how it came out. It sort of punctured the leather. Remember the foil transfer kit uses pressure and not heat to apply the foil to the material. So the bolder and the stronger the lines are, the more pressure and pushing down you're going to get on the material. So I didn't like how this one looked on the bold setting, but I did like the medium tip. So that design is also available for you to try. And I will be adding more foiling designs to my shop and I will link those for you below in the description box if you want to try those out. I hope you found that video helpful and you're going to try making some faux leather foiled earrings yourself. Remember I have these two very pretty patterns that I made on my blog. They're free. You can head over there using the link in the description box below so you can download them and you can try making your first set of earrings with this new Cricut technology. It's really neat because you're able to add very intricate 
designs to faux leather with the foil where you couldn't before if you had to weed an intricate design out of foil iron-on or heat transfer vinyl. So it's a very cool technology. Head over to my blog and grab those files so you can test it out for yourself. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.